Well, good morning, uh, Gateway. Uh, it's actually Saturday evening as we're filming this. Pastor Wes reminded me that every church in the world is going to be live streaming their services on Sunday morning. So we're hoping to upload this video a little bit later on this evening to beat the rush. But it could be that uh, our 8.30 service folks are gathering together at 8.30 on Sunday morning. Could be that uh, our second service folks are uh, gathering together and watching this at 10 a.m. Or maybe, uh, I imagine, our young adults are just getting up at 11.30 in the morning and watching this. Welcome, young adults. Good morning. So much has taken place since I left a week and a half ago to visit the jungles of Ecuador. And the main thing that happened is the reason why you're watching this service on your TV screen instead of attending a service at our building. Let me just say to everybody, welcome. I'm picturing you right now as you attend this online service. Maybe you've gotten together with a family on your block, or maybe your small group is gathered together, or maybe it's just you, or maybe you and your family that are watching this morning. I'm up on the screen. Lindsay's worship suggestions are on your computer. You're saying some prayers, singing along. The kids are in their PJs. Dad is still in his bathrobe. Mom is working on her third cup of coffee. Sounds comfy, just don't get too used to it. I will say that I'm missing all of you like crazy. This is really weird to be a Sunday morning and not together. Please send me a text or an email. Let me know how you're doing this week. I am missing you, I wanna pray for you. Let me start by giving a few updates. In addition to the COVID-19 situation, there are a lot of other things going on in the lives of our Gateway family right now. And to begin with, I want to update you about Tanika Jacobs, who we have been praying for unceasingly for the last few years. This past Tuesday morning, Tanika was rushed from the hospice in Toronto to sick kids because a set of lungs became available and they were a match. After a very long surgery, Tanika is uh, recovering in the ICU. Her surgery seems to have gone extremely well. She's intubated but awake, and according to her mom, Nikki, and I quote, she's being her sassy self already. We're so thankful to the Lord for this uh, surgery, but let's not forget to keep praying for Tanika. Perhaps take some time in your living room to do just that right after this message. This is her second double lung surgery, and the challenge that she is facing now makes this an uphill battle. Now more than ever, Gateway, she needs your prayers and support. Another update is to let you know what happened at the Ninawachi Bible Institute in the jungles of Ecuador. So a week and a half ago, Mark Van Donkersgood and Dave Abbott and I uh, jumped on a plane and left for Ecuador. Dave is a mechanic, and he went to help the director there, Mark Schaefer, with some of the vehicles that have been breaking down. And Mark and I went to teach the students the set-free retreat material that we have taught several times here at Gateway, and it's been so life-changing for us, we wanted to share it with them. Ninawachi has about 15 students. They come from different indigenous tribes in the Amazon basin in Ecuador. They're being trained and prepared to preach the gospel and plant churches among some of the least reach people of the world. And as you can imagine, the spiritual opposition on these young people is just tremendous. And because of their culture, it was very awkward for many of them to do the things that we were asking them to do this week. They confessed their sins to one another. They were learning about their identity in Christ and how to take authority over their enemy. They forgave the people that had hurt them. They learned how even to forgive themselves whenever their heart condemns them. And they allowed Jesus to speak his truth into the wounded places of their heart, replacing the lies that they have believed with the truth of God's word. This was a powerful time of ministry, and I want to thank you, Gateway, for releasing me to be there. The last night that we were there, it was the evening prayer hut, and student after student after student spoke and thanked us for coming. Some of them, for the first time in their lives, were just beaming with the joy of freedom. I wish you could have seen it. They were so grateful that God has given to them the weapons of confession and forgiveness to experience freedom from guilt and shame. It was not lost on them that this is made possible by a church in Canada that loves them and prays for them. On their behalf, I want to say thank you so much, Gateway. I want to tell you the story of just one couple 
a Warani couple by the name of Diana and Daime. This young couple has experienced tremendous suffering. Before Daime became a Christian, they lost a child. And through this painful experience, Daime came to Christ. They began their pastoral studies at Ninawachi. Um, they're getting ready now that they're almost graduated to move back to a Waroni community to plant a church. But the spiritual opposition is just huge. And for a number of reasons, Daime has been discouraged and he was tempted to give up and to go back home. But God had other plans. And as a result of sort of a miracle that God did in his heart this week and in his marriage, he's recommitting himself to becoming a missionary for the Waroni, his people. He and Diana will be completing their training this year, moving up the Shirpuno River to a community called Quay Werono, Werono, Quay Werono. Um, I'm butchering the, trans, uh, the, the translation. But Lord willing, this will be the first church in that unreached community. A final area of update is to just uh, let you know about our response to the coronavirus situation. I won't uh, go into a lot of detail about it because I already uh, made another video that we uploaded uh, last night. It goes into more detail. But if you're looking to get our, yourself up to speed on our plans, go to our website at gw.church and check out the link at the top of the page. And we're going to be updating that uh, regularly. Earlier this morning, um, I sent out an email to everyone on our da database, and uh, that was on Saturday morning. If you didn't get that email, check your junk file, and if you still can't find it, please send our office administrator an email at jenny at gw.church, and we'll make sure that we add you to our list. We want you to get those. In a nutshell, we're taking seriously the recommendation from Public Health Ontario to suspend our large church or group gatherings. Sunday services are going to be online for today and for the next two Sundays, and midweek programs are going to be suspended for around the same time frame. If you have questions at all, do not hesitate to be in touch with a member of our staff. If you have your Bibles with you now, and I hope that you do, um, I'm going to get you to turn with me to the 23rd Psalm. For thousands of years, this little psalm has comforted and encouraged people going through challenging times. And like we always do, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to open your Bible and look for that reference. I'm going to be reading, as I always do, out of the New International Version. the 23rd Psalm. Here's what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, when I went to seminary many, many moons ago, I took a course on the Psalms. And one of the things we learned is that there are three kinds of Psalms that we find in the Bible. There are three kinds of songs that the people of Israel sang for thousands of years. They're Psalms, first of all, of orientation. These are Psalms that tell us, here's what the world should be like. Psalms of orientation help us to celebrate that God made the world and God is still in control. Second kind of psalm are psalms of disorientation. These are psalms that are written while people are going through difficult experiences. Psalms of dis disorientation remind us that sin has damaged the world and we need God to save us and help us, especially in times of trouble. And finally, there are psalms of reorientation, psalms that are written after God has helped us. He's answered our prayers, and we feel grateful. Psalms of reorientation help us to thank God for what he's done to get us through a tough time. Now, something I want you to notice is that the 23rd Psalm is written as a psalm of disorientation. The author is walking through the darkest valley while he's writing this psalm. And notice what gives him the greatest comfort. The fact that God 
is his good shepherd. It's not so much what God does that comforts him, it's who God is. God is his shepherd. And that simple fact is an anchor for his soul. And shepherds, you see, devote the life of, uh, they, they devote themselves to the care of their sheep. And this is who God is to you as well. So no, no matter how you're feeling right now, you might be feeling angry, you might be feeling disappointed, you might be feeling sad or fearful. If you know Jesus as your savior, if you're a child of God because of your faith in Christ, what you need to know is that God is your shepherd and he's devoted to your care. And in the time that we have remaining, we wanna think about this question. If God is our shepherd, how can we respond in times of trouble? Allow me to suggest five things from this psalm of disorientation that we can all do this week. First of all, abide in Christ. Jesus is the one who said, I am the good shepherd for the sheep. And like vulnerable sheep, the sh safest place that we can be is right by his side. So I'm asking you to make it a priority these days to spend intentional time with your good shepherd. This is how we're going to avoid the world's panic and enjoy God's peace. Just yesterday, I was out driving with Krista when I made a little mistake. I was sitting at a red light and I wanted to turn right thinking that the cars across from me also had a red light. And in fact, they had an advanced green, and so it wasn't my turn to go. Now, normally, a driver in Caledonia will let something like that go, especially since I accelerated and didn't cause them to have to slow down. But this time was different. They sped up. The person behind me then honked the horn for the longest time. He gave me the your number one salute and tailgated me for the next two kilometers. It was seriously upsetting. And unfortunately, this is the state of mind of a lot of people today in our society. Normally, rational Canadians, we're losing our minds. And I'm noticing a lot of fear, and I'm noticing a lot of anger. Compare this with the psalmist who's going through a dark valley, and he says, there's nothing I need because the Lord is my shepherd, and he leads me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters to restore my soul in his presence. As Christians, we can relax a little bit more than the, than the average Canadian, but only to the extent that we stay close to the shepherd. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, say, good morning, Lord. This day belongs to you. Lead me. Get out your Bible and spend some time in the early hours drawing close and receiving his love for you. Like the psalmist, remember who God is and not just what God has done. And if you haven't already, call our church office and sign up right now for Right Now Media. Think of it as Netflix for Christians. With the kids off school for the next three weeks, parents, you're gonna need it. There are great Christian videos for kids, great teaching for youth and adults on your phone, the app on your tablet, your TV. If you find yourself going squirrely these days, looking for something different than reruns of The Office for the eighth time, check out Right Now Media. Here's something else. Take some time to pray. Pray for Tanika. Pray for the students of the Ninawachi Bible Institute. Pray for the leaders of Canada and the world. Pray for people suffering from this virus. Pray for our frontline health workers. Pray for the people in our church family as the Lord leads them to your mind. And please pray for me, pray for the elders and for our staff at Gateway that we would lead well during this challenging time. Take out a journal, write out your prayers, and listen and see what God wants to say to you. Let him lead you beside quiet waters. Stay close to the shepherd gateway. He restores your soul. How can we respond in times of trouble? Here's something else. Be wise, but don't worry. These days, we've heard a lot of good advice about washing our hands, cleansing and disinfecting our cell phone, and don't touch your face, wave hello, don't hug, social um, distancing as much as possible, uh, avoiding large groups, avoiding travel. My understanding of the situation is that we're trying to slow the advance of the infection so that we don't overwhelm our medical 
a community or medical system, out of love and respect for our medical people, out of love and care for the elderly and for those who are most vulnerable among us, we're taking a few weeks to be careful. We can do this. Let's do it with a good attitude. So please understand, we're not making the decision here to suspend our services because we're worried or because we're panicked. I haven't worried about this situation for a moment, not yet. In Philippians chapter four, verse six, the apostle Paul tells us, turn your worries into prayers. And so the decision to suspend our gatherings and to change our ministry is out of respect for our emergency personnel, out of love for those who are more vulnerable among us. Soon this emergency is gonna be over and a new set of challenges is gonna come along. So we don't need to be worried because we know who our good shepherd is, but we do need to be wise. Some of you are gonna think we're being too careful. Some of you are gonna think that I'm not taking the situation seriously enough. The last time a virus of this magnitude came along is when my grandfather was six years old. It was the Spanish influenza pandemic of uh, 1918. And my grandfather's mother, my great grandmother, she died of the flu that year. This event dramatically changed the course of my grandfather's life. He didn't grow up in a Christian household. And due to his father's remarriage, he was forced to leave home at a very young age. He ended up making his way up north to Kirkland Lake, where he started working at a gold mine. And there by himself, he wandered into a local Baptist church. And he was baptized. And would that have happened if he stayed at home? Hard to know. Perhaps, as the Bible says, God worked out those kind of things for good. And um, during my grandfather's lifetime of 83 long years, there were many such emergencies. The Spanish flu was followed by the First World War, and then the Great Depression, and then the Second World War, and then the atom bomb, and then the Cold War, famines, illnesses, dictators, the genocide. Let's not forget that the last century was the blood, bloodiest in the history of humankind. It makes me think of a scene from the first Men in Black movie. Will Smith plays a character called Agent J. He's the assistant for Tommy Lee Jones' character named Agent K. And at one part in the movie, they're fighting invaders from outer space and Agent J shoots up the street with his noisy weapon. Agent K says, we do not discharge our weapons in view of the public. Agent J says, man, we ain't got time for this cover up. There's an Archelian battle cruiser that's about to, and Agent K, who's more experienced, interrupts him and says, there's always an Archelian battle, cru battle cruiser or a Carillion death ray or an intergalactic plague. In other words, there's always something, isn't there? So we need to be wise, but not be worried because God is and has always been in control. He's our shepherd. Here's something else that we can do these days. We can ask for help. As our shepherd, God gives us this psalm as a prayer to remind us that we can always come to him for help. And we also want to remember that God has put us into local churches so that we can rely on each other for support. Something that you need to know is that our Gateway staff is not taking time off for these next few weeks. We are leaning in harder than ever. Call us, email us, text us. This is what we're here for. And please be there for someone in your church who's going through a challenging time. Reach out to a friend. Call somebody today. The Lord is going to put somebody on your mind and you can pray for them and you can give them a call. For the first couple of hundred years AD, the early church met. Most of their meetings took place in homes and small gatherings, just like you are today. And they grew and they were discipled and so can you. But it means that we have to stay connected. If you're going through a challenging time personally, please reach out. We are working harder than ever to serve you. Some of you in the next few weeks are going to have financial challenges. That's why we have a compassion team and a compassion fund, but you have to let us know how we can help. If you can't get out, 
Call us. Let's see if we can get somebody to run and get you groceries. With everybody chipping in, we can do this. Some of you in the next few weeks are going to have challenges, relational challenges, emotional challenges. Um, on our website, under the heading, Getting in Touch, you're going to notice that there is a place to fill out a connecting card like we do every Sunday. Please today fill this out and let us know how we can serve you. Let us know how we can pray for you. At Gateway, we have a tremendous opportunity to grow in our faith these days. Challenges like this are miracle grow for our sanctification and our character development if we lean on the Lord and if we ask each other for help and lend a helping hand. Which leads me to my next point, keep on serving. Here at Gateway, we are ramping up ministry here, but doing it in different ways. There's going to be more phone calls, more texting and emails, more online communication, one, one, more one-on-one -on -one ministry. I'm so excited about this. Because during this time of uncertainty, I am confident that the Lord is going to be drawing many people to himself. People who have left God on the sidelines a little bit. People who have wandered away from the Lord. People who maybe haven't given God much of a thought. They're going to be reaching out in prayer. And this is something that we have seen over and over again throughout history. The church grows through times of uncertainty. For example, the Great Reformation of the European Church took place in the midst of a terrible plague. Christians back in those days leaned in, served their neighbors, and made the name of Christ glorious. Millions were saved by their example. Friends, this is our moment to shine. Like us, Peter wrote, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks, to give the reason for the hope that you have. And so at this time, let's not hoard the necessities, but let's be known as those who love to share. Keep serving. So there's a few things that we can do to respond to challenging times. Here's a final suggestion, and it's going to sound weird. Don't stop meeting. Now, I know that sounds a little weird coming from somebody who just canceled church gatherings, large church gatherings for the next few weeks. But as you know, meeting in our world today doesn't always require face-to-face -face or large group gatherings. Social isolation doesn't have to lead to loneliness. Many months ago, when I was planning our services for the end of March, the Lord led me to plan a mini-series on the 23rd Psalm for the end of this month, and I believe it was his good plan to remind us at this time of history that he is our good shepherd. So please join us for these important online services. Make them a huge priority. Tune in, stream them when you would normally come to church so that you stay in the habit. Sing songs together. Invite neighbors and family, small group to come over. Memorize the 23rd Psalm with us and recite it out loud. It takes about 20 seconds as you wash your hands. Find a new gear spiritually. Take some initiative, friends. Be a leader in your home. Don't be passive. Make plans to grow spiritually. Look at this as a season of ministry opportunity. Call a friend, get together on the phone, or confess your sins to one another. Make a Zoom meeting, FaceTime somebody, get together in a coffee shop, whatever you're comfortable with. The book of Hebrews tells us, don't give up meeting together, and with our technology, it's possible. Friends, if you read the 21st chapter of Luke, you're going to see that Jesus predicted the challenges like this will always be with us until he comes back. This is not rocking God's world. He's not nervous. Jesus is still in control. He's your good shepherd, and he's dedicated to caring for your soul. He cares about your worries, and he can be counted on to see you through these challenging times and the challenges that will come. In the meantime, there's an opportunity for us to persevere and to love, to grow in prayer, to abide in Christ, to serve others, and to receive the help that we need. This is not a time for the church to shrink back. It's not a time for the church to be afraid. This is a time for the church of Christ to move forward, friends. Christ shed his blood for our salvation. His cause is righteous and unstoppable. Nothing can stop the good purposes of your good shepherd. Surely his goodness and love will follow you all the days 
of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to continue to pray for Tanika. We thank you, Father, for her surgery. We thank you for the good report, but we continue, Father, to pray for her healing and for her strength. We pray, Father, that the doctors and nurses would have tremendous wisdom and love. We pray that you would strengthen her family and, Lord, that you would give her a miracle of healing. Lord, we continue to pray for Ethan McPherson as well and for many others in our church family who are suffering from worry and fear, anxiety, anger, and disappointment. Father, we leave all of these things before you. We lay them in your hands. We thank you that you are our good shepherd. Help us to abide this week. Help us, Father, not to be so worried, but rather to be wise. I pray, Father, that we would reach out, that we would ask for help, and that we would offer help and serve others. And finally, Lord, we pray that we just wouldn't stop meeting during this time. Give us the opportunity, Lord, to connect in meaningful ways. And we pray, Father, that you would see us through this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.